we are heirs. We are heirs of the Father. We are joint heirs with the Son. Amen. We are children of the kingdom. We are family. We are one. one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a year of rejoicing. It's a year of laughter that the devil cannot stop in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Shall we be seated? We are taking this time to specially welcome again uh, our His Eminence, our Father in the Lord, the President of the Christian Association of Nigeria, so the number one Christian. We are happy to have him in the first service we are having this year to be with us. It has been made possible because he has done his national broadcast, which we will listen to. Praise the Lord. So he did not uh, go to Abuja to stay there to do it, and it has been, and it will be aired. So we are privileged to have him with us. You are welcome, sir. And so this morning, we are so privileged that you'll be the one to give us the word. Amen? Amen. To start off this year. It's a real privilege. Not only one church has the privilege, and that is Orita Mefa in Nigeria. Praise the Lord. Not even the National Christian Center, Abuja, has that privilege today. So we are very happy to have you, sir. And... Uh, you know, he doubles also as, his, as the president of the great convention, the Nigerian Baptist Convention. You are welcome. We want to welcome our mommy, our mother in Israel. She's also seated. Uh, God bless you. Let's listen to a few announcements we have. Um, we want to welcome members of this church who had been in diaspora, and they, they are around, uh, they are at home for the Christmas and New Year. Anyone, just lift your hands. We are not bringing you out. Is anyone around? Okay. Okay. On Sunday, we will still welcome such people, because uh, when they come around like this, we must express our warm love to them, warm hearts of fellowship. Uh, just a few things from our bulletin of this past Sunday. Our New Year fasting and prayer, which will be for 30 days, uh, would have begun today, but you see, uh, we want you to, all the turkeys and the chickens, that have uh, been killed. We want you to be able to consume them. So, but as from tomorrow morning, by the grace of God, it is not because we have no food to eat. It's not hunger strike. But it's a time to dedicate ourselves, our lives, our homes, unto the Lord for the year 2019. I want to encourage you to participate in it. Participate in it at least to the level that your health can accommodate. Uh, here, we don't encourage people to violate uh, the principles of health, good health, uh, also patients and say, okay, uh, go ahead and uh, fast. Or those who are on some regular drugs, please go on and observe what you are supposed to. But make this time a time of um, prayers and especially our emphasis is on the prayers and the fasting please do it as unto the Lord as unto the Lord the old people uh, do it consciously praise the Lord we don't want you to do it because you're going to last for 30 days we don't want you to do it to the detriment of your health so just do it as you can accommodate 
there are some old people that they cannot go beyond 12 noon. That is acceptable to God. That's acceptable to God. They cannot go beyond 3. That's acceptable to God. But every evening, we'll be gathering here. So as from tomorrow evening, uh, we'll be gathering here for one hour of prayers. And you know what? 2019 will be so glorious for you. I cannot hear you saying amen. This is year we'll be praying and making prophetic pronouncements. Amen? And you better receive it. Very, very important. Receive it. Receive it. And you see the difference. You'll be able to compare this year with other years. Change your posture this year to God. Just change it. And uh, you will really enjoy God this year. Amen. So it starts tomorrow and we end the last day of the, the month of January. Another important program is the one coming up this Saturday at 2 p.m. Pastors and all the kings and the church council, they are and their spouses will be having a time of retreat. So, um, and it's coming up at 2 p.m. Take note of that. Uh, this same Saturday in the evening, the play of the year, gospel group play of the year, the gospel group drama arm will be presenting their plate of the year titled Ripples on Saturday, January 5, 2019 at 5 p.m. in this church auditorium. Uh, I could recollect in those days when we were still in the university, we were all, mob we were all carrying our buses and coming to watch this play. But I've discovered that many people, many of our people, they don't even regard it now. Come and you'll be blessed. It's a drama that we always bless people every year. A drama we are always looking forward to. Play of the year by the gospel group. Be here on Saturday and you'll be blessed. Amen? Amen. The New Year Thanksgiving service will come up this Sunday, January 6th, during the morning worship. Uh, the anointing service will come up in the evening at 6 p.m. During the service also on Sunday, we shall be having the dedication of church council members for the year 2019. So all members of the council try to be present. Uh, we'll be having dedication of members of the church council. On that same day, after the service, there will be church advisory committee meeting. And then to be followed by church, first church business meeting on Wednesday. And then on Friday, stroke Saturday, that is 11th to the 19th of January, Ibadan the North Baptist Association Night of Glory will be coming up. It started just this last year, 2018. So we shall be having the second edition. And it's for all churches in the association. And Ori Tamefa is the headquarters of the association. So it's coming up here, and we are expected to be. So it is going to be our first vigil this year. And then at the end of the month, too, we still have another but be present for this first BG. Praise the Lord. Um, we, I want to take this time on behalf of my associate pastor too to express our gratitude, our appreciation to all members and units and groups and departments that have found it fit to give unto us Christmas to New Year gifts. 
the Lord will beautify your lives with surprise package of blessings in this year 2019. I'm Olori you, Eshe. I particularly want to say that those who I'm yet to acknowledge, please bear with me. I'm doing it <laughs> at a pace that I can only afford now. I'm so filled with many things. Uh, I'm doing it gradually. I've done to some. I have the list. I have every. I have a register for many things. Gifts that are coming, even visit, I have registered for it. You may not know, but I do. And I do know when. There are times when I want to check something. I know when this person came, what happened, what, and so on. Uh, please, I have your list. I have your names. And I'm praying for you. But to have time to begin to text and so on, I'm still trying to create more time. I will still get to your own. I've started it. Praise the Lord. And even also, well, we want to thank God for the government, governor too. He has uh, sent gifts to the pastor, and uh, which uh, we are going to express appreciation to him and his wife. Praise the Lord. God bless you. time to give to God this first day of the year 2019 and the offer to him is him 403 him 403 all things are thine we shall rise to sing the first and the last stanzas together Shall remain standing. Shall we pray? Immortal and the invisible God, the most high God, the King of glory, the everlasting Father, we worship you, we adore you. We magnify that holy name of God, and we are saying thank you, Jehovah. For the grace and mercies you have granted unto us, even to be able to see another year. Father, we come before your presence that you begin the year 2019 with us in the name of Jesus Christ. In our going out and our coming in, Father, your presence will envelop us. Wherever your presence will not go with us, Heavenly Father, we pray that we shall not be there in the name of Jesus Christ. In all our effort, Father, we pray that you are going to bless our efforts in the name of Jesus. And as you bless us, Heavenly Father, grant us even the willing heart always to offer 
willingly to you all the time in the name of Jesus. And as we offer even little, but the first offering for this year 2019, Father, we pray it will be acceptable in your sight. Amen. That every time we come before you, all our offering and tithes will increase in the name of Jesus Christ. Your blessings, O God, shall be upon us. Amen. We shall be in sound health, in sound mind, in sound body. That our praises shall always be sound also with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Blessed be the name of mighty God. To you be all glory and honor forever and ever. In Jesus' glorious name, we have prayed and worshipped. Hallelujah. He is the King of kings. He is the Lord of lords. His name is Jesus. 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 Jesus.
is from Psalm 37. Psalm 37, and we shall be reading from verse 23 to verse 26. Psalm 37, verse 23 to verse 26. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighted in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholded him with his hand. I have been young, and now I'm old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. He is ever merciful and lended, and his seed is blessed. May the Lord bless the hearing, the understanding, and the doing of his words in Jesus' name.
Oh, glory to God for this day and this opportunity given to me by God through our pastor to share the word of life with you. I can't take that for granted, but a grace and a mercy that God has used you to extend to me. And I pray that this pulpit will never run dry of inspiration. There will not be death of the word of God in this sanctuary. As God's people come, they will be filled to the brim from above. Through you, in the mighty name of Jesus. It is a brand new day. But a day none of us, no matter how old, has seen before. But I know that God is good. He doesn't preserve for evil, but for good. And the fact that you have not died is that there are many things in stock for you which your heavenly father has prepared for this year. May none of them elude you as you pass through every month of the year in the mighty name of Jesus. This morning, I'm going to speak to us on fortified to stand firm. Fortified to stand firm. We had a building, the Nigerian Baptist Convention had a building in Abuja. And another one in Makodi. The two of them had the same problem. They had 40, 40 structure. The contractor that undo, the same contractor and do the same jobs. And he manifested the same defect. We never allowed him to handle anything for us again. We blacklisted him. That was shortly by the time I came to office. He did one before I came to office. He did one when I came to office. But when I went to Abuja to examine their work, I rejected it and we blacklisted him. What do we do? Because we didn't want the building to collapse and become an hazard to the users. And we didn't want all the money we have spent on it to be a waste. So we brought engineers together. And they came with their suggestion that we must fortify the two buildings. They, are, they said they are, they are, there is a way out by which we will do reinforcement to the buildings and they will stand. Nothing will be a means at all. So we follow their professional advice and they were allowed to do the work. And up to today, the two buildings are working properly by the grace of God. Especially, you know, it could be very dangerous when it is school structure and children will be using it. So they did the work, they put in pillars to hold the structure and uh, we were even going up because they started right from the foundation to the glory of God. It was amazing, the wisdom God has given to man that a faulty building could be so reinforced to be able to withstand pressure of use and even adverse weather conditions. 
and God taught me a lesson. Of our own, with all the challenges of life, by this nature we carry, we were not designed to withstand them. But the one who made us as we are, made us like that so that we can always lean and depend on him. Therefore, he has always made, he has also made sufficient provision for our reinforcement. Whatever way we cannot carry, he will fortify us. He will stand by us. He will reinforce us. He will strengthen us so that we might be able to carry through. Fortified to stand firm. Beloved, we don't know tomorrow. God knows tomorrow. But I know that there is no year for anyone without undulating paths. Walk along the road, no matter how well built that road may be, it will have a folly. It will have a small E. It will have a bend. And that is the story of the life of a human being. It is never straight and smooth. It has always come with bends, with undulation, and with gullies. At times it will be straight. But it's not always straight. However, I want to assure somebody here today that the Lord that has created our world to be like that is also the Lord to lead us through it. And nothing will go amiss for you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Whether it is a bend, or an undulation, or a hill, or a valley. It will fortify you to go through them all successfully. I think I will hear better amen. amen. But I'm not surprised I'm not hearing better amen. Because it is a Baptist church. They say they are amen with style. Not like CAC amen. Because Baptist people, you are too educated. Just to say amen anyhow. But I prefer people who will say amen anyhow. Because amen is Jesus. And the more we shout Jesus, the better things go. Amen. amen. Therefore, beloved, this morning, as I challenge us on the topic 45 to stand firm from Psalm 37. I will take you through the basis for you to stand firm. Come rain, come sunshine in the year 2019. What will be the basis for that to happen? In Psalm 37, verse 23, the Bible says, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And he delights in his ways. The first reason, basis for you to stand firm, whatever happened this year, is, not, is that your step is not be to be ordered by you, but by your maker. Every step you are going to take this year will be a step of purpose. And not ordinary purpose, but defined purpose. Yeah. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, not by himself. No matter how good what you want to do may be, 
it has to be ordered by him. And allow him, please, to order your step. When our pastor was preaching yesterday, he said, there are people who wait on the Lord and allow him to direct because the priests have to lead the journey into Jordan. The ark of the covenant of the Lord of the whole heart, we have to go before them. I think I heard you say something like that. And it is that that the people will follow because that was the presence of the Lord ahead of them. Guiding and directing them. He's the master designer of everything. And he knows how to take us through. The steps of a good man are ordered by the law. Please, don't rush into doing anything. Don't join order just to do anything. Otherwise, it may be exercised in futility. You will just wear yourself out. Don't blame God if you don't wait on him before taking any step. Don't be too much in a haste and don't be too wise to step out without him ordering your step. As good as preaching is, Apostle Paul wanted to go one direction to go and preach, but he said, the spirit of the Lord will not allow it. The spirit of the Lord didn't say don't go out to preach, but the spirit said don't go that way. You don't have success in that way. You may be a professional. Nobody needs to counsel you about your work. You know everything. But Paul can plant and Apollo can water. If God does not give the increase, it's vanity of vanity. Have you seen people who are not professional in your field that have succeeded before? That is God. That is God. The first person to design a computer was not a computer scientist. He was a medical doctor. But God ordered his step. But as good as that was, he employed a small boy to work with him. And that small boy was not highly educated. He was to be administering that computer work for him. Later, the man was told, leave this computer work. Go back to your medical profession. And that young man became the manager of the computer business. And that man is the one you call today Microsoft. He managed what he did not start. And he transformed this personal computer into public use. Because the steps were ordered, not by man, but by God. You will not be at a wrong place at a wrong time. I think we will hear better amen from you. This year, this year, you will not step out in the wrong direction. If you do that, it will be regret all through. That will not be your portion. When I was living, in Bashan. There was a robbery that took place. Overnight. Not too far away from the pastorium. And as the armed robber surrounded the house, the owner called the police. There were gas men that the armed robbers had overpowered. They didn't kill them. But as they were overpowering the gas men, the landlord called the police. And the police were coming. The 
armed robbers left the house, ran away before the police came. But while they were still expecting the policemen, one of the guards said that he wanted to excrete and that he would go to the nearby bush. There was a nearby bush very close to the house. His colleague told him, let's wait for the police first. Let them do their work and finish and go back before you go and excrete. He said they can no longer wait because the team was pressing very hard. Well, he couldn't persuade him to wait for the police. So he went to a street in the nearby bush. By the time he was coming out of that bush, that was when the police were coming. And they thought it was one of the thieves. And they shot him dead. He was at the wrong place at the wrong time. Even if it was the right place, it was the wrong time. He did not allow his steps to be ordered by the Lord. Beloved, I pray for you. And I think you will say amen with all the strength within you. This year, you will not step out in the wrong direction. You will not be at the right place at the wrong time. In the mighty name of Jesus. As the Lord orders your step this year, these among other things will happen to you. Number one, the Lord will go before you to make crooked ways straight. Isaiah 45, 2 to 3. Number two, he will break in pieces the gates of brass. What is the grace of brass? It is the hindrance before you. Paul says, the Lord has opened a door before me, but adversaries are many. That is the gate of brass. When the Lord Orders your steps. When he goes before you, he breaks in pieces all the gates of brass. I don't know what the hindrance may be to your joy. The Jordan that may block your way to your promised land. This year, the Lord orders your step. You will see the gates of brass being broken into pieces in the mighty name of Jesus. Number three, he will cut in sunder the bars of iron. There is a difference between brass and iron. Iron appears to be stronger than brass. There are degrees and categories of warfare and trials in life. But no matter how severe the problem may be, the trouble may be the Lord who goes before you is a master over them all. And whatever may be the bars of iron with the agents of Satan may be put before you either concerning your promotion or concerning your business a contract you have been pursuing for so long for, you, for which you have spent money and time, the Lord we arise this year as he orders your step. All those indresses he will cut asunder. And it will be as if it has not been you before. In the mighty name of Jesus. And if you allow him to order your steps, he will give you treasures which he has closed the eyes of many others from sin. That is what is called treasures of darkness. When you say 
we have treasures of darkness. What we are saying is we have treasures that darkness has covered and people couldn't see it. But they are treasures. But when God wants to prosper a person, what others trivialize, what they overlook, it will make a good mind. Somebody's eyes will just open to it. I think as I've told you before, uh, the first pure water that we used to hear of was Ragolis. Ragolis water. Ragolis water. Before that time in Nigeria, we were not buying water to drink. You go to the tap and get water. Or you just take water from your well and you begin to drink. But this man, Rashid Badamasi, Ragolis, started a water bottling company and called Ragolis Water. They market, they desire to market it among the high. And people saw that using Ragolis water in events was a mark of status. So people that were highly placed started ordering for Ragolis water whenever they had events. And Ragolis water started prospering. You know what happened? Rashid Badamasi was a Muslim in Ikorodu. Hello? And he had a piece of land. And one church wanted that land. And they approached Rashid Badamasi for that land to sell it to them. And Rashid Badamasi told them they had belonged to the Lord and the fullness thereof. I cannot sell the land that belongs to God. If God wants to use the land, let him take it over. And he released the land to the church to go, and, to, to go and build sanctuary. And God said, I'm going to reward you. Though you don't know me, but by your action, you have honored me. I'm going to open your eyes to treasures of darkness. He will not need to procure raw material for what will prosper him. He just needed to sink borehole. He sunk borehole. Water started coming from the ground which God has made available there. Nobody was competing it for it with him. And he was bottling water. And it prospered. It was when he has made his money from pure water that others started doing poor water. Hello. The Lord owns heaven and heart. He knows the step that will prosper you. Only one job in life can turn your situation right side up. You are going to hit the jackpot this year. Because the Lord is going to order your step. If you are careful enough, to wait on him. Fortify. To stand firm. That was the message. And that's the message that we are considering. Fortify. To stand firm. Beloved. I am also. Urging you from this passage. The Bible says the steps of the righteous man are ordered by the law. The second thing, the second basis for you to prosper, to excel, is that you are going to be one of those. The law will adjudge good in all you do this year. Don't walk in wickedness. Please endeavor to be good to others. Because the good God will reward the good people. Not the wicked. 
If you continue to be wicked, mercy will not reach out to you. The Bible says the steps of a good man, not a wicked man, are ordered by the law. Remember to be good this year. Because it is key to steps of accuracy. It is very key. If you are wicked, you are enemy of your soul. The book of Titus chapter 3, verse 8. Say, this is a faithful saying. And these things I will lie that thou affirm very constantly. And my pastor, please continue to affirm it. Because I see the Bible says you must affirm it. This is a faithful saying. And these things are we that thou affirm constantly. That they which have believed in God. Like people of Orita Meva Baptist Church that have believed in God, might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto men. These things are good. If you want profit this year, please maintain good works. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the way of the ungodly. Who does not stand in the way of sinners. Or sit down in the counsel of the wicked. But is our meditation is always in the law of of the law. Remember, if you are not good, you cannot receive from the good God. Because the good God does not encourage wickedness. There is limit to which you can enjoy grace from the law. In the Bible, in Acts chapter 4, verses 36 to 37, one man was adjured to be an example of good works. And that was Bar Nabaz. Bar in Hebrew means the son of. Bar Nabaz means the son of consolation. And what we know as his name today was a nickname. Because of what this man was used to doing amidst the disciples. When people were afraid to move near Saul, they still felt it was very dangerous. It was Barnabas that reached out to him, encouraged him, brought him up, and led him to the company of the disciples in order for Paul to have a people to identify with. The Bible says, this Barnabas, whose real name is Joseph, the real name was Joseph, who by the apostles was so named, I said nickname, Barnabas. Which is being interpreted the son of consolation. He was a Levite. And of the country of Cyprus. He had land. He sold it. And he brought the money. And laid it at the apostles feet. A good man. With good works. Not only that. In Acts chapter 11. From verse 22 to 25. The Bible says. And the hand of the Lord was with them. And a great number believed and turned unto the Lord. Then tidings of these things came unto the ears of the church, which was in Jerusalem. And they sent forth who? Barnabas. That he should go as far as Antioch. You see, he's an encourager. Who, when he came and has seen the grace of God, was glad. 
Hear what the Bible says. And he exhorted them all that with purpose of art, they should cleave unto the Lord. And the conclusion of the whole thing was that the Bible says about Barnabas, for he was a good man and full of the Holy Ghost and of faith. And much people was added unto the Lord. That was the man. Through good works. Then they parted Barnabas to Tartus. What did he go to do again? To go and seek Saul. Hallelujah. Seek others. Don't kill others. Through nocturnal ministry. Some people know how to appear to, other, to others in sleep and kill them. They will not receive the mercy of God this year. And the Lord will not hand you over to them this year. Only if you are good. Be good. Tell the person sitting near you, be good this year. Amen? Number three. Number three basis for you to stand firm is that there is a God with you who is ready to uphold you when you stumble. The presence of God is going with you this year. He has decided not to leave you alone. And when you stumble, because you know there is pro probability of you stumbling, he will uphold you. He will hold your hand. He will allow you to get to your destination. In the name of Jesus Christ. When others who do not know our God stumble and fall, you will stand firm. You will never fall. Because God of heaven had decided in a special way to fortify you, to reinforce you, to give you an increased capacity to withstand what should have crossed you. That is your God. The Bible says in Psalm 34, verses 19 and 20. That many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivers him out of many. Out of many of them. Out of many. Everybody say it. Say it again. Face somebody and tell him or her. The Lord God of heaven will deliver you out of all troubles this year in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. The Bible further says that the Lord keeps the bone of the righteous and none of them will be broken. Psalm 34 19 to 20 and this was the experience of Paul the Apostle in life and in his ministry. And I know if you were straight, it will be your experience. Second Corinthians 4, 8 to 9. Paul says, we are troubled on every side. Yet, we are not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. We are persecuted. Yes. But we are not forsaken. We are cast down. But not destroyed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If. The tough things happening to other people in the world. Has not happened to you. We would think God has over pampered you. But God. Has allowed us to experience the same thing. But to come out with different stories. 
Hallelujah. This year again, you will come out with a different story. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the midst of persecution in life, you will not be forsaken. In the name of Jesus. Number four. The Lord your God, by nature, is a faithful God. He never abandons the righteous. He will not abandon nor forsake you. That is the reason you are going to stand firm. You have a dependable God. The Bible says that by two immutable things, it is practically impossible for God to lie. He has won and said that surely I will be with you. Multiply, I will multiply you. And he cannot change. He cannot change. Any other promise can change. His own cannot change. You are serving a God who does not have your own nature. You can disappoint. He cannot. So it is our own nature we use to judge God and doubt God. God is not like my father. He's not like your father. And he's not like me. He's not like you. God is altogether dependable. I think mama like a mama professor who is a professor of mathematics the, when the, I think the, she must have struggled and tried to do a test of reliability for God. <laughs> Level of confidentiality. And uh, I don't know what she has come out with. And she will tell us that God is altogether reliable. Amen and amen. amen. So you are serving that God. The Lord God that is equal to the task. Who will say a thing and stand by it? Who can never be intimidated? And who can never fail by what he has opposed to do? That is the God that says that he will order your step and he will never abandon you. We are accounted righteous through Jesus Christ. And as a result of that, God has special interest in us. He says, when you pass through water, I will do what? What is, did he say? When you pass through waters, I, you don't know it. You are not confident to say it. God doesn't boast. The only thing that he boasts about is about his personality. I, I, no other person. There's a dust. You should not compare him. He doesn't have a rival. Yeah, you should say God is not humble. That is the only place where he's not humble. He's not humble about what he is. He is just what he is. He, can, he cannot be contested. And he doesn't have a rival. And it is not pride. It's a statement of fact. In, Psalm, in Isaiah 49, as in 14 to 16, the Bible says, But Zion said, The Lord has forsaken me. And my Lord has forgotten me. Can a woman forget a, a sucking child? That she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Yea! They may forget. Yet will I not forget you. Behold! Hello? When you hear behold, what does that mean? Pay attention! Be more alert. Listen very carefully to what I'm telling you. Don't be distracted. Behold, I have graven you upon the palms of my hands. 
Hello, everybody, look at your palm. Can you see anything there? Hello? You, can you see anything there? What do you see? Max. Who put it there? God has graven you there. Your name is there. Your house number is there. Your business is here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's fuller than your photos card. All your personal details are here. No wonder when you are traveling now, they say you print your finger. And your own is not like any, old, like any other all over the world. You are a unique creature. You are uniquely created. <laughs> Hallelujah. Say, I am graving you in the palms of my hands. Your words are continually before me. What a wonderful God. Who can pay personal attention to an insignificant me. Everybody is significant before him. And you are number one. To the glory of God. See yourself. Look at yourself and say, I'm a big man. Look at yourself and say, I'm a big man. God is paying particular attention to me. Do like a big man where you are sitting. A big woman. Hallelujah. Remember the situation of Sidrach, Mizak, and Abednego. They didn't matter to the people of that land. They wanted just to throw them into the fire and get them consumed. But in the fire, what happened? Hey, oh! There was the fourth person in the fire with them. Because they were so important, so significant. They so much matter before God. He joined them. He said, hey, you are not going to burn them alone. You will burn their God with them. <laughs> Hallelujah. Is that possible? Hey, oh! You can never be consumed by any fire in this world. Because any fire you enter, your God will enter ahead of you. He will be there with you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say, I am proud of you, Jesus. He will never let you down. You know how the men of this world rose against me in this last year. Evil men. They didn't want transparency. And they felt that the work I was doing, the report I was giving, was exposing past administration. And those who ate with the past administration now became enemy. But nothing can be done against the truth. If they are sure, let them go to court. Let them take me to EFCC or ICPC. Let's see who will come back with this grace. Hello? The righteous will be as bold as liar. You allege, you raise a lot of allegations. Panel was set up, you ran away. Why? Why should you run away? Why? For me, the more you do that, the stronger I become. And the more ruthless I will be with you. I go to my sleep, I sleep like a baby. Because I didn't do anybody any harm. People in the occult world who are in the church, don't look bony in church. Only one badge. You know, Lucila, one one year. Why, what are you doing in the church? Your contemporaries are not here. They are in the dark world. Go and join them. Don't corrupt anyone. You are not destined for the kingdom. I don't regard them. They have no bearing with us. They only come here to, to steal, to, 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 to steal our, our, our liberty. They cannot succeed. 
in the mighty name of Jesus. So with their importance, let them go away. We don't need their importance here. We don't need it at all. There is no compromise with the dark world. I have a life to live. And I've made up my mind to live my life for him. And I know he can never fail. Evil men in the house of God. What are they doing? The last two we said that Mr. and Abednego. And the fire become a, became a cooler. And they were enjoying themselves there. Their enemies were in trouble. When the enemy saw they could not get burnt in the fire, what do you think will be their problem? Many will be their problem. Because they know they were in hot soup. Because they have been judged by the God of heaven. God will judge your adversaries. My, my sermon is becoming too long. Let me quickly round up my message. Number five. This year, you will stand because you will experience the God of provision in a special way. The Bible says, I've been young. Now I am old. <laughs> I have never seen the righteous like you forsaken. You know, your, your seed begging bread. It will never happen. The seed of Professor Abaton will never beg bread. Your seed will never beg for bread. Your seed will never beg for bread. In the name of Jesus, heaven and earth will pass away. A joy from his word concerning you will never pass away. Beat your chest and say, by the grace of God, my seed will never beg for bread. Amen. That is the promise of God for you this year. Let me give you an illustration. When Jezebel decided to do evil, and the prophet Elijah made a pronouncement, there will be no rain, no dew, until I have spoken, the rains will come. So that the Holy said, you might know there is a God that rules in the affairs of men. And heaven was shut. How will Elijah eat? The Lord who will now allow the righteous to bear for bread went to Elijah. Said, go to the brook of Credo. There, I have prepared birds of heaven to prepare food for you. You, have you seen a place where the boss are the chefs? Hello? The chefs that were cooking for Elijah, they were beds. They are not, well, not women beds. <laughs> Hallelujah. What a marvelous God we serve. He's bigger than your thoughts. A great God. And we have never heard of it before, and we didn't hear of it again that beds will be preparing food for human beings to eat. And not ordinary food, balanced food. Meat and cake. It will get carbohydrate. It will get protein. Hallelujah. And the, at the brook of Kidron, it, get, it, it was getting water. What's your problem? Tell the person sitting near you, what's your problem? When boss can feed a prophet, what's your problem? Hello? This year will be good for you. You are fortified to prosper in it. In the mighty name of Jesus. Finally! This year you will stand firm because you will operate in mercy. You will operate in what? You will operate in mercy. And because you are going to operate in mercy, you will learn to many people. And you will never borrow. Amen. See how that Psalm 37 that we read is concluded in verse 36. He is ever merciful. He learns. 
and his seed is blessed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is ever what? Merciful. You remember the story of your merciful servant? Can you remember? He owed his master so much, he couldn't pay. He was to be sent to jail. But when he begged for mercy, his master operated in mercy and allowed him to be free. He went out in Matthew 18. He saw another servant who owed him money. And that one owed him just very little. And that one also knelt down was begging him, please forgive me. Have mercy on me. I will pay you. And he said, no! I will not take this. The one who received mercy refused to operate in mercy. When his master heard about his wickedness against another person, his master said, this man that was so messy didn't deserve it. Go! Arrest him. Send him into jail. He will never come out of it. Your portion will not be like that. <laughs> Mercy has preserved you to see this year. Please operate in mercy this year. And if you operate in mercy, you will lend to many people. You will never borrow. The one who lends is the one who operates in sufficiency. Whose needs are not only met, but who has enough to spare. When you spare this year, you are going to spare with ease. It will not be difficult for you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. When men are cast down because you are prayed in mercy, you will tell them there is a lifting up. That will be your portion. Through you this year, many lives will be blessed. And for you to be a blessing is already settled. This church will operate under open heaven. In the mighty name of Jesus. Blessings, promotions will come right, left, and center. And this citadel of God's people will be a citadel of praise, celebration, thanksgiving to God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Beloved, this year, the Lord has fortified you enough to stand firm. And no trial, no temptation, no undulation in life, no ill, no mountain, will be able to cause you to shake. You will not shake, but you will shake everything. You will stand firm. At the end of the year, your testimony shall be great. So shall it be. I see you at the end of 2019. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Shall we rise? Shall we rise to pray? Shall we rise to pray? Wow. The heaven over this church is opened. The heaven over your family is opened. I want you to key into that. Start by thanking the Lord. Start by just thanking the Lord. You are not the one who broke it open. <laughs> God in his infinite mercy has done that for us. Through the instrumentality of the world that his servant this morning. Lift your hands and just bless the Lord. Lift your hands and just magnify him. Lift your hands and magnify him. I just appreciate him. See, I key into it this morning, Lord. I key into it. I have been fortified by your word, by the power in your word. 
to stand firm. Begin to respond to the Lord this morning. Release your legs for the Lord to order the steps as a good man. The steps of the righteous are ordered. Tell the Lord, this year, Lord, I've released myself unto you to be guided, to be led. I will not place my leg where you have not ordered. Spirit of error will not work upon my life and family. My leg will not stray into the den of wickedness. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor seated in the seat of discomfort. This year, Lord, I will not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. It is by their counsel you will know they are not godly. Say, Lord, this year I will not walk in that council in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we are prayed. Lift your hand and say, Father. Say, Father. According to your word to me today morning, say, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of discomfort. Say, In 2019, Lord, my steps shall be ordered from above. I will not walk in the counsel of the ungodly, I will not stand in the way of the sinners. I will not sit in the seat of discomfort. In the mighty name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray for that people. Pray yourself into it. Pray yourself into it. In 2019, in 2019, you are the one that will order my step. You are the one that will order my step, Lord. You are the one that will order my step. In the mighty name of Jesus, we are prayed. In the name of Jesus, we are prayed. Lift your hands and say, Father, in the year 2019, I will follow in the path of righteousness. 
and in the part of your nature. Kindness, goodness, meekness, mercy, in the mighty name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray that into your life. Open your mouth and pray for that into your lives and to your entire family. Entire family. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Another prayer. There are benefits, there are blessings for those who have made, who have keyed into prescriptions for the righteous this morning. Part of which that the Lord himself will take care of you. He will not forsake you. Our choir used to sing, I will never forget you nor forsake you. Said in my palms, I hold you. Isaiah chapter 49. He said, Can a woman forget her sucking child that she will not have compassion on the son of her womb? He said, Yet they may forget. Yet will I not forget thee. Just as we have been taught this morning. Say, Behold, I have graded thee upon the paths of my hands. Say, Thy walls are continually before me. Say, Thy children shall make haste. Thy destroyers and they that make thee will shall go forth out of thee. If you are claiming that, leave to Hannah and say, Father, in the year 2019, as I key my life into you, to walk in your path of righteousness and of goodness to others. You will never forsake me. You will never leave me with the challenges I have to pass through. You will carry me as your baby and carry me to the end of 2019 unhurt, undestroyed, undevastated in the name of Jesus. My eyes are not see evil. In the mighty name of Jesus. You fed the prophet using ravens. You will feed me using your own resources. In the mighty name of Jesus. Open your mouth and receive this blessing. Open your mouth and receive this blessing for your family. For yourself and for your family. In Jesus' name, we are praying. We give opportunity for those who want to come to this altar quickly. Quickly. This is the first service this year. And you want to come to the altar. But I can assure you, we are closing at the door of 12. My help cometh from the Lord. I don't know what you want to bring before the Lord. You are having the opportunity to come to this altar. He will not suffer my foot, thy foot to be moved. The Lord which keeps 
church is a living church, God. As you come unto him to commit yourself for him, unto him at the beginning of this year, this 2019, the first day of this year, all through the days of this year, his presence shall abide with you. This year you will not suffer. <laughs> Unquenchable Amen. shall be your portion. Amen. You will laugh and laugh your enemy to scorn. This year, your life has been opened Amen. for his blessings to come Amen. and to pour Amen. unlimited, Amen. unhindered Amen. upon your life and family Amen. in the name of Jesus. The Lord is going to meet you at the point of your need. <laughs> what areas where you suffered in 2018, it is gone. It has been buried. Affliction will not arise the second time over your life in 2019. In the mighty name of Jesus. This is your year of testimony. In the mighty name of Jesus. It is well with you, your entire family, your children, grandchildren, brothers and sisters, in the mighty name of Jesus. This year, people will gather to rejoice with you. <laughs> you will not be a failure. Thank you, Father. We consecrate and dedicate you all in the name of God the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Shall we rise, everybody? Shall we rise? All of us, shall we rise? Lift your hands as we are closing. Unto you, Lord, be honor and praise and adoration for sending your word to us so powerfully. We have received the word. We will go on this year to serve you. Amen. We will serve you in holiness. Amen. We will serve you in righteousness. Amen. People around us will know that we are truly, truly your children. Amen. In all that we do this year, we will not cross we will not walk against your kingdom. Amen. We will not miss the blessings Amen. you have already prepared for us. Amen. The blessings that you have prepared shall be our portion. Amen. If you not be given to another, Amen. we shall not be replaced Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we thank you. We look up unto you as we go forth. We are looking up unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. He's going to direct us. Amen. He's going to lead us. Amen. As we are following him, we will never fail. Amen. We will not stumble. Amen. And at the end, it shall be victory. Amen. Success. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, our Father. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Amen. In the name of Jesus, we are prayed. Now, may the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, continue to abide with us from this first day 
to the end of 2019 and forevermore. In Jesus' name we are prayed. In the name of Jesus we are prayed. People of God, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shout a louder hallelujah. For a third time, shout a very loud hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your hands together to celebrate Jesus. The recession of him. Our recession of him is in uh, 58. Number 58 is a prayer. He leaded me. What a blessed thought. 58. The last verse. Amen. Uh...